you know, for many years, I used to go, you know, shopping in the grocery store with my kids when they were little, and I would always get asked, where did you buy your shoes? Where did you get your dress? How do you stay so thin? This is what I would get all the time. And I would very freely give out the advice because, you know, I said, oh, you know, I got the dress here and, and uh, you know, I buy this, I eat this because it's, it's, it's great, it's healthy, but yet it's the, uh, just constantly giving out the advice. And um, so one day I came home and I said to my husband, you know, I should really do this as a, as a career because everybody wants my advice either on how I stay thin, on exercise, and I'm just giving out the free advice, I might as well charge for it. So then and there I decided to call myself a life and style consultant. That was like, you know, I figured, okay, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm incorporating life and style and helping them with you know, all aspects. So there it began and I started taking, I did more real like shopping with people more than anything else because there were a lot of women you know living in the suburbs women just don't know how to dress they would look at me when i would be in the store and say well, you must be going somewhere and i would say no i enjoy i'm the type of person that i dress every day it not for to impress anybody for myself so but i would constantly get the question where are you going why are you so dressed up the women would walk around with I mean, their kids would be dressed to the hilt, girls with the bows perfectly in their hair, with the matching shoes, and the mothers looked like something the cat dragged in. And it always bothered me, because I would say, you know, you, you know, why, why do you, don't you give yourself the same attention as you give your kids, because you're just as, you know, you're just as important. So I would take them shopping, because they had no clue. If they had an occasion, oh, I have a wedding, I need your advice. I found that every time I took a woman shopping, or a man, as soon as they looked at themselves in the mirror, they would berate themselves. You were, oh, look at me, I'm so fat, I'm so ugly, I, this doesn't look good on me. And I would just have to constantly sit there and tell them, no, you're wrong. It, you, you're not seeing yourself correctly. You're seeing yourself in a funhouse mirror. This is not a funhouse mirror. You're just seeing a distorted image. So they would say, no, 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 don't you see, don't you see my stomach, how fat my stomach is? And these, some of these women were gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous women with model bodies, but, but saw this, this distorted image. So after doing this for so long, I finally said, you know, this is ridiculous. I could help these people and I could give them the most beautiful dresses and the most beautiful bags and shoes. But if they hate themselves from the inside, it's going to project and it's not, you know, it's going to be awful. So I finally, that's when I said, I'm going to become a coach because it's just like a house. If you have a house that's crumbling in the inside, but it's beautiful on the outside, there is no house. You have to have the electrical working, the plumbing working, and that's the foundation. So it's just like us. If we don't have a foundation, the outside, you could look as beautiful on the outside, but it, it's not going to work because you're never going to feel secure. I was a psychology major in college and I never did anything with it. So I had the background of psychology. I had the intuitive, uh, you know, sense of being able to help people even without the psychology degree. But I decided to be a life coach instead of going further with psychology because I felt that people are, are more comfortable nowadays saying they see a life coach. It's, it's got less of a stigma that you don't feel like you're telling people, oh, I have problems. Because a life coach really is somebody who just encourages and you know makes people feel like they do, they have the power within them. So that's why I said, you know what, I'm gonna be a life coach, but I wanted to make my, have some credibility. So I did a course and got certification and then became a certified life coach. And that's what I've been doing ever since. This was about five years ago. and. The, the, uh, the amazing thing is that I have seen people transform, I mean, you know, from people who, who really had no, no self-worth whatsoever to, to the complete opposite. So, so that's my story. So that's how I became a life coach. The most challenging situation that I've had is somebody that was in an extremely abusive relationship to the point where she was, she was beaten, I mean, beaten to a pulp and she didn't know where to go and she came to me and i had to convince her of her work and it was very hard because she was so 
beaten down by this person that she didn't even have the courage to to do anything. And I, it was for me, it was it was I took this to such a personal level because I, you know, to me, the abuse of another person, you know, whether it's physical or mental, is you know, it's pure pure evil. And I had to convince her, you are worthy. You don't stand for this anymore. And I got her. I got her to finally leave this person. And now the guy is, she's actually going through you know, court, this court system now, and he's getting him what he deserved. So that, that, was, that was hard for me because it really hit me personally. Not, not personally where I've ever experienced that, but personally where I felt such a, um, I got emotionally involved with this person because I couldn't, I couldn't stand to see somebody who had so much, so much to be proud of and to feel so unworthy to let somebody do that to her. So that was, that was most challenging. What drives me is the, the constant feeling of satisfaction of knowing that I'm making a difference every day in somebody's life. You know, there are days that I wake up, again, getting back to Facebook. When I put something up, like a general post, which is usually what I'm feeling, because when I wake up in the morning, I say, what am I going to write about? Because as, as I said to you earlier, I get joy out of writing these posts on Facebook because I know there's one person out there that is saying, you know, she, and, and I do, because I get constant messages saying, how did you know I was feeling this today? People don't realize that I feel the same thing everybody else feels. They, I am not on a, sitting on an ivory tower, you know, looking down on everybody saying, this is what you should be because I'm God and I'm, you know. No, what it is is that I've been there. I've, I'm just as anxious. I'm just as insecure with certain things. I'm just as, as, you know, I have the same emotions. So what I'm feeling, if I wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm feeling like I don't really want to, I don't want to start my day. I feel like crap today. I have to say to myself, no, get up and, you know, you, you, you know, today's going to be a great day. So I have to, you know, everybody has to work at that. So I'm basically, I'm just like everybody else. And that's what, that, that's my passion. Getting back to your question about that, that drives me. The f getting one Facebook message a day, even if it's just one, which I do, which is more, I do get more, but that makes my day. I really walk on air because I know that somebody feels better because of the words that I've written.